Hallelujah. Do you believe that God can turn everything around? Do you believe that God can change your situation? Do you believe that God can overturn and baton and baton until it gets to your turn? Come on, somebody give the Lord a shout.
God is incredible. How do you compare this God? You have diagnosed a woman without a womb, and all of a sudden the woman gave birth. What do you call that? It's called incredible. Incredible God. You are an incredible God. Incredible. is the Lamb. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, awesome God. Blessed Redeemer, our Master, our Keeper, our Shield, our Defender, our Rock, our Life Source, our Owner, the one who was and is and is to come, Ancient of Days, forever the same, Almighty, all sufficient, endlessly endless, tirelessly tireless, agelessly ageless, we worship you. The one who was before the beginning began, who will be there after the ending has ended. Awesome God, we worship and adore you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Genesis chapter 2 verse 15. Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. I'd like us to read it very briefly, quickly in three translations. King James Version, Message Bible, NIV. King James Message, NIV. Let's read it together. Everybody, please, quickly, one to go. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. To dress it and to keep it. Let's get it the message now. Want to go? Let's read together. God took the man and set him down in the garden of Eden to walk the ground and to keep it in order. This was why I created you, oh God, and walk the ground. Hallelujah. All right now. So I put I created you on purpose for an assignment. Now, here is the assignment walk. NIV, want to go. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to and do what? To walk it. Some say walk it. Say you can say walk it. Say your garden will walk if you walk it. Say you can say your garden will walk if you walk it. Walk it. Take care of it. Walk it. Take care of it. All right, please take your seat. Created to walk. Created to walk. God's purpose for creating man was walk and not rest. Please take it down. His number one purpose for creating man was what? Walk and not rest. Many people love to rest. Many people love to sleep. Many people love to go for holidays. Many people love to have it easy. But the reason you were created was not for that. Man was created to manage all of God's creation and all of God's resources. Now, the vastness of the resources and the vastness of the creation should let you know the enormity of work that lies ahead for the man that God had created. The words of God before creating the man and the words of God after creating the man give us very serious implication of the reason for creating the man. 
Genesis 1 26. God said before the creation, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. Let them have dominion. Are you there, somebody? Over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the earth. So God said, I'm making man, but I'm making man in whose image? In whose likeness? Now we're going to find out why we were created. Because I see many people loaf around the place, walk around the place, walk around the place, putting hands in the pocket, tying towel by 10 a.m. and expecting blessings to come. Lazing around the place and troubling their mother for school fees. Troubling their father for transport fare. Amen? Created in our image. Two, after our likeness. Three, let them have what? Question, what is the image of God? Lazy man, lazy man. Have you ever seen God in the light of a lazy man? So, laziness is not God's image. Number two, laziness is not God's likeness. Come on. Is God lazy? Oh, Lord. Is God lazy? Okay, dominion means sit down, do nothing, and just be in power. Uneasy lies the head that wears what? Dominion is defined as work. Let them have dominion. They, see, to be a president in America, you must be able to work 18 hours. Every, that's the criteria. If you can't qualify for that, you can't be a president. 18 hours a day. Work 18 hours a day. That's dominion. Dominion is defined as what? Work. Now, that's what God said before he created man. I am creating man for one. My image, my likeness, dominion. These three words connote, connote what? Work. The image of God is a hard worker. His likeness is a hard worker. In his dominion, is a hard worker. Then in creation, after creating them, Genesis 1, 28, God blessed them and said, be fruitful. Come on, look up. Fruitfulness is a lazy man's assignment. Ah. Then he said, multiply. Is it lazy people that multiply? Give a lazy man money, he eats it and destroys it. Give a hard worker money, he multiplies the money. Be fruitful. Turn your seed into fruit. Then multiply the fruit. The next one is replenish the earth. Whatever is missing, recreate it. Refill it. M fill the earth with whatever you want to fill it with. Work. He said subdue it. That means any force that tries to rebel against what you want, he said put it under control. Quell rebellion. That's not a sign of laziness or idleness or timidity. Created for work. Created to work. Have dominion. All of these connotes work. They all imply hard and tireless work. Lift your right and say, I was created. Shout it loud. Say, I was created for hard and tireless work. Say again, say, I was created, I was created for, hard for hard and tireless, and work. tireless work. Number two, the image and the likeness of God as seen in scripture is that of a hard worker. Is that of a hard worker. Genesis 1 verse 1. In the beginning, God created. The word created. You don't create sleeping. You don't create folding your arms. You don't create lying down idle. Creation means several, your mind is working, your hand is working, your eye is working, your, everything is working. God created. Look at verse 7, Genesis 1 verse 7. See the image of God, see the kind of God we serve. And God made the firmament. And God divided the waters. Are you there somebody? He made, some say make. Say make. He's making laziness. Is dividing laziness. That's work. Work. Look at verse 16. Then 17. Then 21. Let's run through quickly. And God made two great lights. 
The greater light to rule the day. The lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. How many stars are there in the world? Who knows? One God made all of them. He made them and gave them names. And hasn't forgotten the names. Yet you can't number them. Can you count the stars? No. Can you count the sun? No. He said, I have numbered them all by them. In Job, he mentioned some names I never heard for Orion, Pleiades, names of stars. He, he created them. He fixed them in the sky. Amen. Look at 17. 17. God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give. God. Do you know what it means to set? He measured their angles. Honey bunch, I don't know when I'll have the time to share with us what I studied about the sun. Do you know that the sun, if the sun was any meter away from where it is from the earth, we are either dead or fried. That the place where the sun is, is just the perfect place for the entire planet. God measured all of those geographically and anchored the sun and placed the earth. They say if the earth was not 66 and a half degrees position, the earth will not be what it is. Who tilted the earth to that angle? A hard working God who measured all the distances completely. Amen. Everything you do, shabby, 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 shabby. They give you work to do, shabby. You say you learn mechanic, you have destroyed too many cars. You learn to sew cloth. The first one you sew is like, like Dracula dress. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm doing dry cleaner. See what you have done to somebody's dress. Shabby. God takes time. He, he said... When you understand the word set, it means he measured the degrees and the meters, parameters, and then everything being perfect, said this is the best place. Stay here. And he didn't just said he maintains it there. Why is it that the ocean has never flooded a quite yet? God set a boundary. Walk. Walk. Husband, walk. Wife, walk. Wife to be, walk. Marriage is not a place to sleep. Oh. Walk now. Don't give me trouble tomorrow. Verse 25. See the image of God. 25. And God made the beast, some say made, of the earth after his kind. Question, how many beasts are alive? How is he aware that this one is different from this one? And of the thousands of beasts, not one is equal. Not one is repeated. Of all the cats, tiger, lion, cheetah, come down. They are all, everything is different. And listen, one tiger is different from another tiger. The same way one man is different from another man. Eye colors different. Fingerprints different. What a beautiful God. You want to be the image of God? Hard work. Hard work. You will sit on the table and it's 4 a.m. Sing 6 p.m. You haven't gotten up. You're still there. You get up and go to bed to sleep. Sleep will not come to your eye. Because you remember there's still some work to do. Greatness is not asking for skills. It's asking for application of skills. Are you there, somebody? When you get to verse 31, you see there. So if we truly have the image and likeness of God, then we were created to be very hard workers. Very hard workers. Not loafers. Every assignment God gave to Adam required work. Why? Work is the only thing that guarantees man's enjoyment, man's fulfillment. You can't feel fulfilled in the absence of work. It's the way you work and the more you work that you find joy 
and find fulfillment. When work is removed from man, man becomes useless. Okay, honey bun, remove jumping from tree to tree from monkey. The monkey is mad. Hello? Hello? Remove flying from bed. Let bed just be one place. Remove scratching the head from hand. Tell the end, you come, stop, oh, stop. Oh. You are not in America. Oh. Don't do ground. Oh. The hand doesn't hear that grammar. It was created for that. Stop the dog from barking. It's his nature. Amen, somebody. Write this down. God walked tirelessly for six days and only rested for one day. You want the image of God? Walk tirelessly for six days and only rest one day. <laughs> Genesis 1, 31. Genesis 2, 1 to 3. He walked tirelessly, very hard for six days and never rested. When he finished the walk was when he rested. And he rested only one day after working six days. We want to rest three days and walk three days. Want to rest four days and walk three days. Wouldn't you love your boss to say, okay, come to work one day a week, rest seven days and get paid. Wouldn't you like that? Talk to me. Wouldn't you like that? God says it's against nature. To walk one day, rest two days. Or walk one day, rest one week. God says walk six days and rest how many days? Image of God. Likeness of Okay. See God's instruction to you. Exodus 23, 12. On the screen, quickly. 23, 12. You read. You read. One to go. Six days shall thou. What? 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 Six days shall thou. Thou. Who is thou? Who is thou? You should do what? How many days? Why is God saying so? I created you in my likeness. I created you after my image, in my image. Walk six days, like I walk six days. Six days shall thou do thy work. And on the seventh day thou shall what? Don't sleep too much. Don't want holiday too much. Hard work doesn't kill anybody. It is too much rest that kills people. You were created to walk. And the more you walk, the longer you live. Can I say that again? The more you walk, the longer you live. Go to a village now and pull a woman who is of 60 something or 80 something and bring her to your house with a condition, with everything and put her there to be eating and watching TV. Give her 20, 10 years, she has died. Leave her in the village to be going to her farm and walking around and doing her thing. 25 years is still strong. Kakaraka. Nothing kills men like lack of work. We are dying in this generation at 45, at 43, at 39 because we are lazy. Laziness is the greatest murderer. Amen, somebody? Am I talking to somebody in the house of God? Push him and say, neighbor, wake up, oh, six days, walk. Say you were created to walk. There's no place for laziness. God does not only walk. Number four, he assesses and appraises his work done. See how God works for me. God does not need a supervisor. God is his own supervisor. That's why work is different from job. Next Wednesday, I'll, I'll enter there again small. Work is when you are the one working and supervising yourself. Job is when you need a manager, a supervisor to supervise you. Because you know if they don't supervise you, they can't, they can't pay you well. And you are going to job because somebody is signing time book and monitoring you. Work! You don't need nobody monitoring you. You monitor yourself. Are you there, somebody? <laughs> Friends, Genesis 1, verse 4a, verse 10, verse 12, 
verse 18, verse 21, verse 25, verse 31. I'll read only 4a, I'll read 31. I'll tell you what, see how God works. And God saw that the light he had created, he saw that it was good. After God finishes his work in one day, he goes around supervising, appraising. God looks at it and then God says, it is good or not good. He does not just work, he assesses his work. He appraises his work. Every true worker assesses his work. Approves his work. Appraises his work. Don't let someone score you. You score yourself. When you get to verse 10, you say he saw. It was good. Verse 12, he saw. It was good. Look at verse 31. When he finished all the work on the sixth day, watch this. And God saw uh, now, this last day now, he has to do all round supervision. From day one to day two to day three to day four to day five to day six. He saw everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Amen. Amen? 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 Don't just walk. Supervise your work. Don't just walk. Approve your work. Score your work. Appraise your work. This is where the, the difference between a failure and a success comes from. Personal appraisal. If you judge yourself, you will not be judged. But if you allow them to judge you, you might not escape it. Push them and say, walk. Madam, walk. Housewife, walk. Husband, walk. Please, walk. Score yourself. Are you walking enough to deserve to be a, a millionaire? Or you're asking God for millions when you're working for Naira? Next, God only rested after he had finished his work. God only rested after he had finished his what? Rest was meant to only follow your work execution and your work completion. Rest was only meant to follow your work execution and your work what? Completion. The man who is qualified for rest is the man who has finished his work. The man who has completed the assignment is the one qualified for rest. They asked Bishop Abio here one time, Sir, what time do you go to bed? He said, I, I don't have a fixed time. Why, sir? My work determines my rest. When the work for the day is finished, then I go to bed. If it's not finished, we continue. Oh, that's where the greatness lies. It's not in the car he drives. It's not in his height and size. It's in his mentality to walk. That's where wealth comes from. That's where greatness comes from. That's where billions come from. That's where trillions come from. That's where private jets come from. That's where universities come from. That's where 30,000 membership come from. 50, that's where it comes. It doesn't come because God favors you. God favors me. God favors me. I don't know what I'm going through. I don't, God, no! God favors the hard worker. See, man, somebody. It was not only Daniel, Shadrach, and Abednego that were carried into Babylon, but the hard workers were rewarded. It was not only Esther that was a slave in Shushan, but the hard worker was rewarded. It was not only Mordecai that was a gate man at the gate, the hard worker. When you have done your part, God does his part to take you beyond your level. Some of us hear you. Friends, rest mentality is not God's mentality. Rest mentality is not God's mentality. Write this down. Frequent holiday mentality is not scriptural. Check your Bible. In a whole year, God only gave them three public holidays. A nation with too many public holidays is a nation with, with, in the intensive care unit. 
You are not created for holidays. And most of the troubles we suffer come on the days of our holidays. On the heels of our holidays. Woe to him that is at ease. That's where our woes come from. Those ease. Those ease. Those laxities. Those gaps we create. Because the idle mind will certainly become the devil's workshop. He takes advantage of your idleness and brings you down. Empties your oil. Quenches your fire. Drain you of your wisdom. Oh, when did David fall? When did David fall? Every king is going to war. David rested. Bathsheba showed up. Be careful of too much rest and too much holidays. It means you die on top. The time you have on earth is too small for all your laudation to be manifested. How then can you afford to sleep and rest? The time you have is too small for all the matters inside you to come out. How then can you afford to sleep the way you're sleeping? Somebody walked and walked till 88 years and just died two weeks ago. Am I right? Huh? Yet, he was still walking and he has not finished. And you are sleeping. You are waking up in the morning as if everything is waiting for you. Tick, the clock is never going backward. It's always going forward. You are adding age, days, and things are passing by. And there you go. See the way you even come to church. Others are on the speed lane. See them in Lagos. 3 a.m. they are already up. 4 a.m. on the road. Bam! They are back by 11. The next day they are going. You think you can catch up with them? Eh? Friends, walk is the only escape route from affliction. From scarcity. From penury. From shame. The only alternative to hard work in God's kingdom is hard life. The only alternative to hard work in God's kingdom is what? Hard life. If you won't work hard, you will suffer hard life. Brothers and sisters, retirement mentality is not a kingdom mentality. Resist it. You were never created to retire. You were to walk. Didn't you hear I'll be a true soldier. I'll die where? Okay. Retire. Retire. In this kingdom, soldiers die walking. They die on the go. They die in their mission field. They die serving. Amen. Friends, Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10. 9 verse 10. Whatsoever thine hand findeth to do, do it with what? All thy might, for there is no work nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou. Therefore, the grave is the place of rest. You are going to rest there. But while you are here, grab all that your hand can grab. Do all that your life can do. Find all that you were meant to find. Execute all you were meant to execute. When you get to the grave, sleep there. No work there. John 9, 4. See Jesus' mentality. John 9, 4. Very quickly, please help me. I must. Some say must. See how a worker's mentality is. It's not me. If I like. Well, let's, let's just see. I must walk the walk of him that's. So to Jesus, walk is a must. But to other Christians, walk is a me. I must walk that walk he sent me while it is day. What do you mean by day? Talk, talk, answer me. What is day? Why am I alive? Is day. When I die, it's night. So I'm alive to walk out my potential, walk out my purpose, walk out the will of God, walk out divine agenda. I must walk 
as long as I can draw breath, because the night cometh when no man shall. He wasn't talking about day and night. Oh. You know what? People have night duty to do. He's saying, while you are alive, do night and day duty. Because the real night comes when rest comes and you can't walk anymore. Some of you are hearing what I'm you're saying. Look at John 5, 15, 17. See how Jesus, look at why Jesus in, used three years to leave a footprint that the world can never recover from. Come on now, watch this. My father walked hitherto and I see the image of God in Jesus. My papa, they walk every day. He, they walk every, I see him, they walk. As I see him walk, I can slow down. I walk like he walks. So he went in Matthew chapter 9 verse 35. Give me, give it to me. Come on, see what? Jesus went about all the cities and all the villages teaching in their synagogue. See the father's mentality. No night, no rest. Every village, every city, every street, the man is walking around. He's preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing not some. Every sickness that mistakenly crosses his path. Kawai. See what? Are you there, somebody? If I catch you, I ask you, what do you do? He said, I'm not doing anything. You deserve this feast. Go and ask Brown Strowman. You get this feast. <laughs> huh? What are you doing now? I, I, I'm not doing anything. In this world, with your two hands and two eyes and two legs, with too many things to do, I'm just trusting God. I've, I've written an application. Who owns the company you wrote the application to? Not the person get him. How did he start? Ask him. Can't you start like that and start growing? In 10 years you are like him. Or 20 years you are like him. Ah, nobody has come here. Even at 10 days in time, they say go and wait. And you are waiting to waste. You don't wait. Why you wait? Do something else. Amen somebody. Push in or say walk oh. Lord I say walk oh. And they tell you now oh. Say walk oh. Write this down. We are all called by God to labor on this earth in order to enter into God's rest in eternity. God's true rest is in eternity. On this earth is work. It's work. Work for God. Work for self. Work for family. Work to make ends meet. Work to succeed. Work to prosper. Work to grow. Gather by labor. Rest awaits us in eternity. Can I prove, can I prove it? Hebrews 4, 9 to 11. Quickly. Hebrews 4. We are called by God to labor on this earth in order to enter into his rest. It is labor here that qualifies you for rest there. There remained therefore a rest to the people of God. Say loud, Amen. Next verse now. Quick, let's go. For he that is entered into his rest, he also had ceased from his own work. As God did from his, God never stopped working until he finished the work, then qualified for rest. You can't have rest until you have finished your work, then you enter into rest. To rest when there is still work is to cry later when others are blessed. 11. See 11. Let us therefore labor. What should we do? What should we do? What should we do? Labor to enter into the rest. So our way to rest is labor way. Highway to rest is labor way. Walk way. Hard work way. If you wouldn't walk now, you wouldn't rest later. That's why people die poor. Die in penury. Die in abject austerity. I prophesy. Laziness dies in your father's house. That demonic spirit that makes you wake up and feel like there's nowhere to go and nothing to do. I curse it now. Even if you saw your father living recalcitrantly, rebel against it. Rebel. Papa, 
You died a tenant. I can't die like you. You died without employing labor. I must employ thousands and pay them salary. I must be the reason why somebody's children are going to school. Some I hear you. Create the company. Create the business. Find a way. Do something meaningful. Improve upon your existence. Upon the earth. Don't die like this. My father. Walk, I see him walk every day. So I copy it from him. I'm walking too. Amen. I learned of a great man I respect and fear with all my heart. The bishop of Yeriko. I hear that the man is up, by, is in the office by seven. He returns back by one a.m. Seven a.m. One a.m. They asked him recently. He said he works minimum, minimum for any day, 16, 17 hours. Ah! No wonder those are city builders. <laughs> you want to build a city? Appraise yourself on your work. Amen, somebody? Write this down. You were not created for a job. You were created for a work. Job is money, salary, and wage driven. But work is assignment, destiny, purpose, and God driven. Two. When you are a worker, you do more than you are paid to do on your job. Because you are driven by your work. You do more than you are paid to do on your job because you are driven by your what? Work. You can be a worker on a job, but you do more. And listen, it is the more you do on the job that makes them later pay you more than the job you do. Promotion now meets you. Because you're doing extra than you were asked to do. You do more than you are paid to do. Soon you'll be paid more than you are doing. That's the worker's mentality. You don't wait for supervision. You don't wait for anybody. You execute your job because you are a worker. A true worker does his job like his work. After a while, you will soon see how others are demoted and you are rising above them in the same company. Next, number three. Promotion is in the place of work. Only pursues workers on the job. Promotion in the place of work only pursues workers on the job. Not job keepers. Not job seekers. Not job interview writers. He pursues the man who found the job and is working on the job. That's where promotion meets people. Work on the job. Next, you may start out on a job, but you must find your work and graduate into it before you die. Please, don't job till you die. Start out on a job, but find your work. Graduate into your work. If you hope to find fulfillment in life, oh, that's the only key. Your work is where your fulfillment is. Your joy is. Number five, sometimes it is working hard on your job that gives you the platform to be productive on your work. Working hard on your job is what gives you the platform to become what? Productive in your work. It is your job that becomes a springboard to arriving on your work. And when you get to your work, it's easy. It's a lifestyle. You've already mastered working on your job. So now, you can take it to a new dimension without stress. And six, for time's sake, if you are not faithful in another man's work, you will never succeed at your own work. So you can be employed to keep a shop. Do the job like your work. Employed to work for government. Do the job like your work. Use your work in your job. With all amount of excitement and joy. Because what you're doing now. Is what qualifies you to succeed on your own. 
Are you there, somebody? Hear me. Every time you cheat your boss, you have created a monster for a staff. Can I say that again? Every time you cheat or so change your boss, you have created a monster in your future in a staff. A staff on your organization will one day do worse than you have done. It's not a cause. It's a law. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. To be a good worker on your job pays you far more because it will give you a great ending on your own work. Let me read one more scripture and I close. Can I? Luke 16, 10 to 12. Let's read it together. Jesus was the one that taught this to us. Look at what he said. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in what? Much. And he that is unjust in that which is least is unjust also in what? Don't take the small work you're doing as if it's nothing. Give your life to that work. That faithfulness qualifies you for something bigger. Now look at next verse quickly. If therefore you have been faithful, you have not been faithful in unrighteous mammon who will commit to your trust the true. I give you money. Just pay tithe correctly. You can't pay it well. Just give first fruit. You can't give first fruit. Just sow your seed. You can't. Okay, meet the need of a, a needy person. You can't. Who can give you real money? If you're not faithful in little mammon, who will give you real riches? Final scripture, let's close. Finally, let's read to where I want to go. And if you have not been faithful in that, which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? A lot lies ahead for second service. Let's stop there. Stand up. Lift your two hands up. Please, quickly. Lift it up. Say, Father. Say it loud. Say, Father. I am a worker. Say it again. Say, Father. I am a worker. I will not die lazy. I awake to my responsibility. I walk. I walk my way to greatness, to prosperity, to success, to affluence, to wealth. Can I hear you pray in just 60 seconds? Open your mouth. Lord, I am a worker. Thank you for reminding me of who I am in your house. I will not die a lazy man. I will not die an idler. I refuse to wake up and loaf around. I refuse to continue as if nothing is at stake. Lord, every day of my life counts. Help me number my days. Help me number my days. Help me number my days so I can apply my heart unto wisdom. I walk my way to prosperity. I walk my way to affluence. I walk my way to wealth. I walk my way to abundance. I wish there's a believer in the house who understands what I'm talking about now. Lord, I receive grace to be tireless at my duty. I receive grace to be continuous, consistent, insistent upon my business. Ragata leka protaila. In the name of Jesus, say, Father, all you have committed into my hand, don't let it fail. Give me grace to accomplish my assignment, my purpose, my destiny. Can you open your mouth now? Everybody, please, open your mouth now. You have created a star. Don't die a scar. You have created a wealthy man. Don't die a beggar. You have created on top. Don't die at the bottom. You have created to be above. Don't die beneath. Lord, whatever you put inside me, give me grace to manifest. Give me grace to perform. Give me grace to manifest. Give me grace to perform. Give me grace to manifest. Give me grace to perform. Shabatatata, ragata kataya, egata pregatale, shakala bragata kata, shabrada galaga bragaliade, egrada limarabo sataya, lekatata ligata, shaparata katala, rapa risco parati, jegadi galaga bragada, ragalaga bragaligados, meragadi galaga bragadia, ragada galaga di bragalagados, 
In the name of Jesus, say Lord, I command all my giftings, all my potential, all my talents, all my gifts to break out, manifest, manifest, manifest. Oh yeah, walk them out, walk them out, walk them out, walk them out. I was created to walk out my potential, to walk out my giftings. To walk out my greatness, to walk out my stardom, to walk out my business. Lord, I will not end here. Everything bottled up inside of me. I call them for I call them for I call the manager inside me. I call the director inside me. I call the president inside me. I call the singer inside me. I call the business tycoon inside me. I call the Pilonia inside me. I call the pilot inside me. I call the driver inside me. I call the chairman inside me. I call the governor inside me. Somebody open up, 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 open up. In Jesus' name, find up your lips or two and Open them like this. Open them. Say, Lord, these arms shall not be barren. Shall not be barren. Oh my God, can I hear their voice? Oh, say, Lord, my hands shall not be barren. Shall not be barren. My hand shall not be empty. Shall not be empty. My hand shall not be fruitless. My hand shall produce resources. Resolve. Say, these hands shall take care of my family, of my wife, of my husband, of my generation. Oh, yes, speak to your hand. Speak to your hand. He blessed him out and said, Let his hand be sufficient. 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 Your hand shall 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 be sufficient. My 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 hand shall be sufficient. Keteo, keteo, regadiara. In the name. Of Jesus. Amen. Simple prayer. Stretch your hands out. Stretch it. Anyone unemployed that has qualification and capacity for work, I release this month your employment letters. Amen. No, 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 no. I release this month your employment letters. Amen. Whatever capacity you have as certificates, whatever capacity you have in your life to work. I command the job to appear now. Amen. I command the doors to open now. Amen. I command the job to appear now. Amen. I command the doors to open now. Amen. I mention your name in the corridor of power. Amen. Those who have the capacity to employ you, I command them to look for you. Amen. I command them to call you. Amen. I command them to send for you. Amen. Those who did the interview and they said we'll send for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. I put them on the pressure Amen. I put them under pressure Amen. I put them under pressure Amen. they will not sleep yes. until they call you Amen. I command companies to call you Amen. glory war citizens receive your employment letter Amen. on your way to your work receive your employment letter Amen. on your way to your work receive your employment letter Amen. and 
those who will not walk i command your hand to begin to produce i command your head to begin to produce your mind to begin to produce your mentality to begin to produce business doors are opening business capitals are dropping business favors are coming i command you to start that company and get that contract and grow that company into the billions into the billions into the billions into the billions nobody's hand shall be idle Amen. nobody's hand shall be idle Amen. i strengthen your hand Amen. for every good work i strengthen your hand Amen. for every good work Amen. I strengthen your hand for every good work. I strengthen your hand for every good work. I bind laziness. I bind idleness. I bind the spirit of a slugger. It shall not come upon you. I prophesy the closed doors open now. The limitations break now. The resistance break now. The limitations break now. The hindrances break now. The obstacles break now. Now, whatever sat on your life and said you will be wasted like your father, you'll be wasted like your ancestors. I command the spell break, 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 break. Whatever follows your father's children, whatever follows your father's household, to say nobody can rise, nobody can prosper. Your labor shall be frustrated. I cause that voice now. Amen. I silence that voice now. Amen. I silence that voice now. Amen. When you put forth your hand, it shall return with habit. When you put forth your hand, it shall return with blessing. Amen. When you put forth your hand, it shall return with reward. Amen. It shall return with compensation. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. No more stagnation. Amen. No more frustration. Amen. No more barricades. Amen. No more resistance. Amen. As I'm speaking on this altar, your life is taking a new turn. Amen. Your story is turning around now. Amen. Anyone married to a husband Amen. who has been looking for a job, Amen. I command him to create his own work. Amen. I command him to create his own work. Amen. I command him to create his own work. Amen. Anybody who lives here now to start anything, Amen. I command you. Be fruitful, Amen. multiply, Amen. replenish the earth, Amen. subdue the earth, Amen. have dominion Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. You need good health to walk your way to wealth. Yes. So anything fighting your health, anything fighting your mentality, anything fighting your cells, anything fighting your muscles, fighting your skeleton, fighting your alimentary canal, fighting any organ in your body, I stretch the rod of God against every infirmity, against every disease, against every attack, every affliction, and I command them, die! 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 your head Ataqua. to the soles of your feet yes. i set you free amen whom the sun says free ah. is free indeed amen. i untie you amen. from the coven amen. i untie you amen. from the shrine amen. i untie you amen. from the family circle amen. i untie you amen. from every occulting amen. house amen. i untie you amen. now amen. you will leave this place your hand into small thing Amen. whether it is granite or sand Jesus. or vegetable Jesus. or gary or beans Jesus. or rice or the phone as you put your hand my God blows upon it with blessings Amen thank you Jesus lift the hand lift it you came to meet with your God uh. And your God is not lacking in power. Yes. I just heard God say, I am lock I am unlocking something. I am unlocking something. I'm unlocking something. Something that was locked up in somebody for years. I'm unlocking it now. You will not end like this. Oh. There's something tied up. 
there's something locked up i unlock it i unlock it i unbottle you 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 the cause is broken 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 Advancing in destiny. Amen. It shall be clear in three months yes. that something dropped here now. Amen. Lift that hand and give it praise. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Give it praise. <laughs> thank you, Lord. When I see time ticking away and I'm still praying, it's not carelessness. Somebody's life is tied to it. Amen. One person I just saw. I saw you take one step and God multiplies it by a, thou a thousand. Amen. One step, he multiplies by a thousand. Amen. This year is called the year of crisis. Yes. It shall be somebody's greatest year ever. Amen. They are sacking others. Shaka. They'll be looking for you to employ you. Amen. Ah. Ah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. They glorify. Yes, sir. They magnify. Thank you. Take your seat, please. please.